So the, the project is part of a wider um, project called Archives, Assets and Audiences, which is funded by the Arts and Humanities Research Council and run by the Universities of Leicester, Nottingham and Nottingham Trent. And this project is about connecting academic research with the creative industries. So one of the themes for um, the Archives, Assets and Audiences project is the rise, fall and reinvention of industry. And the uh, Leicester's Cultural Quarter really is a, a, a perfect example for exploring um, that theme. The app allows you to access content from the project from a mobile platform. So you can walk around the Cultural Quarter and access information about the history of the buildings and the, the roads and the streets around the area. Um, it's a way of putting history into people's hands and into the locations they are. So you don't have to sit at home reading about these locations. You can walk around the Cultural Quarter and find out about the history of the buildings, the previous uses, the rise, the fall, the reinvention of the buildings and so on. And I think it's just really important to take advantage of um, these new platforms which are emerging. I mean, I think more people now um, use tablets and smartphones to access the internet than they do desktop computers. Um, and as more and more people use these um, kinds of uh, ways of engaging with um, content uh, for more and more things, um, it's really important that uh, culture and heritage organisations reflect that. So we're very lucky for this project to, to meet um, Cuttlefish uh, and find out about their Empedia platform for presenting this kind of content via mobile devices. I think the potential with the technology is that it can tell a, a very full multimedia story. So you can look at pictures, you can watch videos, you can listen to sounds, you can look at maps in the past, the present, you can see how people might want to develop the area in the future. So that rich multimedia device allows you to explore history in a much richer way. The, the locative media element, as we call it, the so-called location-based media, allows people to see the history, see the past, but position it in the present. So they can look at an old building, maybe look at a sign, and the app will give them the history of that. It will tell them why there's an unusual sign above a building, because its previous use led to that sign being put up. We also have the potential with this mobile media to deliver other forms of information. So we're already thinking about the possibilities of augmented reality, where you overlay historical information on contemporary images, and you can use your mobile device to do that. Um, it also fits in with our wider programme and our ambition to become a hub for this kind of um, locative mobile media, um, which is something we're developing in partnership with Cuttlefish um, through our new Phoenix Interact Labs, which is a studio um, designed to kind of explore um, new technologies and how they can be used um, to access culture. Um, often with projects you might maybe have lots of materials but no technology, or lots of technology but no raw material to work with. This project's interesting because it brings together, with through Phoenix, the audience engagement, through Leicester University, the content, and through Cuttlefish, the technology. So it really brings those three key things together. Very recently, we've also um, acquired the archive of the Leicester Mercury newspaper. This is a, a tremendously important um, resource for not just academic researchers, but for the city as a whole. It tells thousands of stories about um, Leicester's recent past over the last 50 years and also contains thousands of photographs that document that. So when we began this research we went to the classic tools of the historians, so uh, local newspaper archives and specifically the Leicester Mercury archive, but also company reports and histories that have been collected by the architectural historian Joan Skinner and bequeathed to the University of Leicester. Once we'd used those more traditional source materials we actually started to gain newer material, um, mostly online through community uh, groups on Facebook and also through Twitter and also recorded lots of new oral histories at the Phoenix with people who lived and worked in the area throughout the last 20 or 30 years. Social history really does um, interest me, so how it's changed um, from my youth being involved in, in the Odeon and everything happened around this area for us as teenagers. Um, even, even the very first time we ever came up on a bus to the city, this was where you kind of dropped off there. So, for example, um, down on Rutland Street, there is a building um, still emblazoned with the former logo of the company of Herbert Marshall, which at one time was a piano uh, kind of department store, um, Herbert Marshall being a very important civic figure in the city. And into the 1980s, that place was reimagined as a local nightclub called Helsinki's, which was very important for the fledgling gay community of Leicester at that time. Also, the Queen buildings, which are now opposite the curve, have had a very chequered history, originally built as a boot and shoe warehouse. Um, in more recent times, this has been a snooker hall, 
uh, rave club in the 90s called Dielectric, and even more recently since then, um, a sex club called G-Spot. Some of the buildings in the area were not originally um, used for factories or for industry. For example, the Athena was the Odeon Cinema, built in the early 1930s. By the 1990s, though, this building had become dilapidated and Odin actually left the premises, leaving it um, empty and unused and a bit of a blight on the area. Since then, however, this has been turned into a new venue for weddings and conferences and banquets as well. So um, we see this project um, as a great pilot um, for future collaborations with um, the University of Leicester and Cuttlefish. And we're excited about um, how we can explore um, new innovative ways of um, allowing people to access and engage with um, the history and heritage of Leicester. I think these findings are important to the cultural quarter as it is at the moment, as it challenges somewhat the idea that this was um, a former industrial area and then regenerated into the cultural quarter today, when actually there was a period of transition in between where it was home to some very important cultural experiences in the city. By doing this research and by talking to the people who actually lived and worked here, we've actually managed to uncover the real history of the area, to put it alongside the industrial and the current regeneration as well.